What is fluid effusion? Fluid effusion is an excess accumulation of fluid in the fluid cavity. This accumulation can sometimes restrict normal lung expansion. The pleura are thin films of connective tissue which line both the outer surface of the lungs and the inside of the chest cavity. The visceral pleura relies on the inside and the parietal pleura on the outside. This cavity is filled with a fluid known as pleural fluid that acts as a lubricant. The pleural fluid is similar to interstitial fluid because it is simply an interstitial fluid and it's made slippery by its albumin. Mm. Pleural effusion is either transudative effusion, exudative effusion, or sometimes lymphatic effusion known as chylothorax. A transudative effusion is caused by some combination of increased hydrostatic pressure and a decreased plasma cortic pressures. This is usually an ultrafiltrate of plasma which has been squeezed out of the pleura as a result of an imbalance between these two forces, the hydrostatic and the ocotic forces in the chest. Conditions which are associated with increased hydrostatic crisis include heart failure and liver cirrhosis with ascites. In the case of liver cirrhosis, there is low production of proteins. The ones which are associated with hypoalbuminemia or low albumin in blood are usually nephrotic syndrome whereby there is excess protein loss or leakage into urine. And because these diseases which are associated with exudative liver effusion are systemic, they usually cause a bilateral and equal effusion. Exudative fluid effusion, on the other hand, is caused by a local process which leads to increased capillary permeability due to inflammation, resulting in exudation of fluid, proteins, cells and other serum constituents into the pleural fluid or the pleural cavity. An exudative effusion, on the other hand, will cause a unilateral effusion. What are the causes of transudative fluid effusion? Nephrotic syndrome and liver disease together with atelectasis are the main causes of transudative fluid effusion. But we have other causes, for example pulmonary embolism, hypoalbuminemia, peritoneal dialysis and congestive heart failure. In exudative fluid effusion, the major causes are tuberculosis, pulmonary embolism, drug-induced pleural effusion, pancreatitis or inflammation of the pancreas, paranemonic effusions, cancer of the lungs, and breast cancer or lymphomas. The clinical manifestations of pleural effusion are variable and often related to the underlying disease process. The most common associated symptoms are coughing, progressive dyspnea or difficulty in breathing, and pruritic chest pain, which becomes worse when the patient is lying flat. The differential diagnosis that you may come up when diagnosing this patient are congestive heart failure, liver cirrhosis with hepatic hydrothorax, nephrotic syndrome, peritoneal dialysis or continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis, hypoproteinemia, glomerulonephritis, superior vena cava obstruction, and cerebrospinal fluid leakage into the preload space. Physical examination of a patient with pleural effusion reveals absent tactile fremitus, dullness on the percussion, and decreased breath sounds on the side of the pleural effusion. Diagnostic pleural aspiration may be also ordered to analyze the pleural fluid. Pleural biopsy and bronchoscopy can also be done. On the imaging part, chest X-ray will indicate a tracheal deviation and helicopter CT scan. On a chest X-ray, it will indicate a fluid accumulation on the costophrenic angles of the affected side, and that when it's taken when a patient is supine, it will indicate a layering effect. An erect chest X-ray will indicate fluid accumulation of the costophrenic angle of the affected side, and that supine taken chest x-ray will indicate a layering effect like this image. Thoracentesis is done to relieve the symptoms and also to help in diagnosis of this condition. Transudative fluid is clear 
while exudative fluid will look cloudy because of the presence of immune cells. Lymphatic fluid looks milky because it is filled with fats and exudative fluid has much more proteins than transudative fluid. A grossly bloody fluid will indicate trauma as the causative factor of this fluid effusion. To differentiate these, then you use the light's criteria, which we are going to look at next. The light's criteria. The fluid is considered an exudate when the ratio of fluid of to serum proteins is greater than 0.5. The ratio of fluid of to serum lactate dehydrogenase is greater than 0.6. And fluid of low density liver proteins of cholesterol is greater than two thirds of the upper limit of the normal serum value. If all these are absent in a fluid, it is a transudate. Treatment of fluid effusion involves removal of the fluid and treatment of the underlying cause. For example, antibiotics can be used for pneumonia and fluid effusion resulting from heart failure are treated with diuretics and sodium restriction diet. Thoracentesis for large effusion and surgery is indicated for large loculated effusions, for example in bacterial pneumonia and tuberculosis. 